Hey everybody, it's Jen. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm sharing with you what is in my cabin bag and we are just going to jump right in. You're like, wait, what is a cabin bag? All right, what I mean when I say cabin bag, it is the smaller bag that I use that has everything that I might need for a flight. Uh, particularly, this is important if you're doing a long haul flight. We recently got back from a wonderful trip to Hawaii, but from Atlanta to Honolulu is nine and a half hours. So that's, that's a very long flight. We were in coach. This bag was invaluable. So I'm going to share with you how I use it, what is in here. This is the most important reason why I feel a little bit more human on these long haul flights. So this bag in particular is one that I got off of Amazon. It was 20 bucks. I'll link it down below. Uh, whatever item you choose doesn't really matter. It could be a crossbody. Um, I have a couple crossbodies that I have used for this very reason. I have started liking having it be an actual belt bag, and I'm gonna get into why that's better in just a second. Um, but basically, it's just a smaller bag that has all the items that you might need during your flight. Now, this is going to be different for every person, right? You may have uh, medications that you'll need or things like that, but I'm gonna go over what is in my bag. Now, a couple of things to note. You do want this bag to be able to fit into your personal item. So if you're me and you're flying and you're usually doing carry-on, okay, you're going to have your roller bag up in the overhead compartment and you're going to have your personal items. So your purse, your tote, your everywhere bag, your backpack in front of, you know, underneath the seat in front of you. This bag will fit in that bag, but I'm actually going to wear it on my body. Okay. So this one happens to be a belt bag. You could either wear it as, you know, a crossbody or actually on your waist, which is what I usually do. And I actually wear this on my body as I'm getting through the airport because it's where I have all of my, you know, my ID and important things. I usually keep one credit card in there. So let's start there. Let's start with what is in these three pockets. In this first pocket, this is where I keep, and I'm going to try to pull it out without actually showing it to you, my driver's license and a credit card and usually a little bit of cash. I won't say I'm OCD because I have friends who actually have OCD, so it's not that, and I have mad respect for anyone who has to deal with that, but I will say that I get myself a little freaked out. I've talked before about how I have travel anxiety, and I have a really bad habit of misplacing my ID. I don't know what it is. I get flustered. And you know, as you come into the airport, you're showing your ID, you're, you're taking out different things from your bag, and it's really easy to just shove it somewhere random because you're in a hurry. You want to make sure you have a designated spot for that ID. Um, for me in here, I have my ID and a credit card. If I was traveling internationally, I would also have my passport in there. And this is actually a little small, I think. Well, I think my passport would fit in there. Um, maybe for you, it's some other form of travel document that you need to make sure you have, but designate a pocket for it. And having it here, wearing it on my person, just helps everything go that much more smoothly in the ever so hectic airports. So all I have in here right now is my driver's license and my credit card. Now this is still packed for my flight. So I wanted to do this video while it was still, you know, top of mind and before I unpacked it. Um, but yeah, that's all that's going in this front section. Now, if you have anyone that you'll need to tip along the way, this might be actually where you're going to put cash. Um, if you're like me, I usually do private transportation when I get to my destination. So I want, I might want some cash if I'm tipping the driver, if I'm not using Uber or Lyft, which of course then you do it through the app, but that might be in here. Um, and then, you know, like I said, your credit card in case you want to buy something in the airport or whatever the case may be. So that is all that's going in this front pocket. Now let's talk about the center compartment. This one is all about electronics. Anymore, we all need a lot of electronics on the airplane, right? Now this one will also fit my phone, so that will go in there. If you are gonna be using an iPad, I would recommend before the flight begins, put your iPad in the seat back pocket um, so that you, again, you're not having to rifle for it to pull out, especially if you're like me, I read books on my iPad, sometimes I have movies loaded on my iPad. 
But let me go over the electronics that I use during the flight. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is my AirFly. I have shown this now in multiple videos. I've talked about it on Instagram. By the way, if you're not following me over there, it is at Jen LaForge. I would love to see you. Um, what this does, it's a little Bluetooth transmitter. And you plug this, this is on your in-flight entertainment, and it depends on the, on the aircraft. Um, I'm predominantly on Delta, and all of their aircraft, this will work with that. Um, this part goes into the headphone jack on the in-flight entertainment. This, you're gonna just plug into the charger that should be right next to it, the little USB. And it will enable you to use your AirPods or whatever, you know, Bluetooth enabled headset you, you have. Maybe you have the Bose noise canceling or something like that um, with the in-flight entertainment system. I love this thing. It works so well. It would make a great um, Christmas gift if you guys are already getting a jump on your holiday shopping. Scott got his first and it was recommended to him by a bunch of his pilot friends and then I got mine and I love it. I use it all the time. So um, especially because I have the AirPod Pro, so it has the noise canceling. I love this. Now, Here's a little comment about the AirPod Pro, particularly if you're flying, um, you know, over three hours. They are not going to hold charge for your entire flight. So I will have backup headphones so that I can switch out. It only takes about 20 minutes for these to fully recharge. So I will need to take a little bit of a break from them before they're ready to go again. But the AirFly and then my AirPod Pros are going in this little pouch. Okay, so what else needs to go in there? A charging cable. I can't believe how many times over the years I have forgotten to bring just a basic charging cable. Now, I have a separate electronics bag that will be down in my personal item that has everything I'll need for on my trip, but this charging cable is designated just for my cabin bag, and it will plug right in. I can charge my phone. I can charge whatever it is I need to charge, and then also I'm going to have in here a brick. Now, here's why. Usually, the little um, you know USB charges will work. Most aircraft have a USB charging port, but if they don't, they may only have a plug or that may be all that works. Sometimes on older aircraft, Delta Airlines, I'm looking at you, some of those aircraft, you need to retire. Oh my God. Anyway, um, you may find that you need the actual plug. So I'm actually going to have in here also a little power brick and a charging cable, okay? Because this will enable me both to charge my phone and also, if I need to, to charge my AirPods. Although the case should be fine. It's just the AirPods itself. If you have AirPods, you know what I'm talking about. And then also in this little compartment, I'm going to have a regular plug-in pair of headphones for all the aforementioned reasons. And then also, if for some reason my AirFly, like if the in-flight entertainment thing is struggling or whatever, I know that I have just a regular pair of plug-in AirPods. Now, if you only have the kind that plug into the lightning cable, you can buy one of those little adapters. Um, I happen to have plenty of these laying around, so those go in there as well. So that's it for my electronics. And then of course my phone will go in there, which I don't have in there right now because I'm using it to record this video. Okay, so I'm putting all of that back in there. All right, so that is our electronics section. Now let's get into this other compartment here which is, and you know, honestly, you guys, I don't like a ton of compartments on a bag. It kind of drives me crazy. The simpler, the better. So three is just about perfect for me. In this bag are all of the things that I call my human essentials for a long haul flight. These are the things that are comfort items, that are toiletry items, things that I'm going to need while I am flying. So what we have in here, um, a quick note before I show you my reading glasses. If you are a contact lens wearer and it is a long haul flight, my strong recommendation is do not wear your contacts. That cabin air just, it's its like a death eater. It will suck the moisture out of your body. I'm gonna talk more about that in just a second. So if you wear contacts, I would not wear them on a long haul flight. If it's important to you, you could always keep your contacts in here and you could pop them in before you land. I tend to just wait till I get to my destination. I'll pop in the bathroom and you know freshen up and put my contacts in then, but otherwise, wear your glasses, y'all. It's just, it, it's just, trust me. <laughs> You've never done a long haul flight and you're a contact lens wearer. Just trust me, you don't wanna wear them on a long haul flight. So what I have in here are my little reading glasses. 
I have some disinfectant wipes. These are actually almost done. I think I only have like three wipes back in here. Yes, they will give them to you when you get on the airplane, um, but I like having these uh, just as my own backup in case they don't hand them out, whatever. Never hurts to have some disinfecting wipes. These work great too when you go to use the bathroom on the plane. And again, I'm going to wear this when I go to use the restroom on the plane, right? Because it's going around my waist. Um, just to do a quick wipe down of everything before you use it. Bathrooms on long haul flights, they, they try to get ahead of it and do a good job, but you know, never hurts. So I have that in there. I also have some tissues just because, you know, it's a mom thing. You want to have tissues. And then this is my little secret weapon. Um, now what I will have in here, and I just pulled out a fresh one. Contact lens cases are brilliant for travel, okay? They are so cheap to buy. They, I mean, if you if you go to the eye doctor, half the time they give them to you for free. I bought a huge, like a case of 12 of them on Amazon because especially for travel, I use them so often. Now in this little one, I have lotion in this uh, facial lotion on this one. So my moisturizer, I guess that's what we would call that. I have moisturizer in this one and I have Advil in this one. This could be for any little item that you might need or want to have during your flight, but I love this because it snaps closed. I know it's secure. The Advil is just because I find sometimes during flights, I just get kind of achy and all of that, and it's just a good thing to have. I will also have Advil in my personal item bag, but again, that's under my seat. I don't want to be rifling through. You may have some other form of medication. Maybe you take melatonin so you can sleep on the plane. Maybe for you, it's a prescription medication, whatever the case may be. Small note on that, do make sure you're traveling with the original prescription bottle, especially if you're traveling overseas. Here in the US, I've never been asked, but overseas, sometimes they will. Um, but if you need to take however many you might need to take during the flight, a contact lens case is a great solution for that. Now, the facial moisturizer. I find that my face on flights gets so dry. Some people like to use like the, you know, moisturizing, misting spray, whatever. I just like my regular facial moisturizer. Now this is just a tiny little bit of it, but it's enough that a couple times during the flight, I can put that on my face. Now, along with the contact lens thing, I also don't wear any makeup. I only have a clean face and I wear moisturizer. If it bothers you to get on and off the airplane with no makeup on and no shade at all, if that's you, I have no problem at all walking around with no makeup on. Maybe I should, I don't know, but I don't. Um, then I would bring some makeup removing wipes so that you can take your makeup off. A nine hour flight, especially if you're acne prone, if you have sensitive skin, you do not want makeup on that skin. So I would take all of my makeup off if I were you. That's what I do. I actually don't even put on makeup the morning of my flight, but having the extra little bit of facial moisturizer to put on my face, it just makes all the difference and it just makes my skin feel wonderful. So little contact lens case with those things in it. Okay, the other thing I'm going to have in here are these little Max Fresh Fresh Wisps from Colgate. You can get these, a couple different brands sell these. I bought a ton of them. I think I got it either on Amazon or at Costco years ago, and I'm still working through the same bunch that I bought. One note, when you go in the bathroom to do this, and I will typically do this if it's an overnight flight before I go to sleep, and then I will do it again when I wake up, see how much actual sleep I get, but you know, in theory. Um, the bathroom water is actually not potable. And I've mentioned this in a couple other uh, videos and people have reminded me that I need to tell people that. Don't drink the water that comes out of the faucet on the airplane. And I'll let you look into why you don't wanna drink that water. I just know that it's not potable water. It's not for drinking. It's for washing hands, it's for bathrooms, it's not for drinking. So when you go to use these, you're gonna to wanna to take a bottle of water with you into the bathroom, okay? So that is the one thing, but I love these and they're just disposable and they have a little like a, um, you know, little flosser thing on the end. There's like hair on there. Oh, it's probably mine. That looks like a dog hair. Anywho, um, so yeah, these are great and I have these in there. Just again, makes me feel a little bit more human, especially before we land, cause you know, gross. Also in here, I have a nail file because that's just something you always wanna have because that could just be really annoying during a flight and very difficult to find if you're rifling through your bag in the dark. 
Didn't even mention that part, how dark it is, especially if it's an overnight flight. I mean, it's so people can sleep, but you're not gonna be able to see anything in your bigger bag. Also, a little thing of moisturizer. Now this is by L'Occitane, I love this. It is very lightly scented. Do not use heavily scented products on an airplane. You never know who might be sensitive to scents around you. You never know who might have asthma. Um, it's already a stressful situation. Don't make somebody's day worse. But a very lightly scented lotion, you're probably okay. This one has a really fresh like lime scent to it, nothing too perfumey. It's almost gone. I need to get a new one of these. But I like the L'Occitane products because it's a really thick moisturizer and it works really beautifully on my hands. So have a little thing of moisturizer in there. Again, if you're a big rule follower, you may want to have this in your separate toiletries bag and then transfer it, you know, um, once you're through security. That's up to you. If it's in an international flight, you have plenty of time to do that while you're waiting in the gate area. Um, I never do that. I've never had this pulled out or questioned, but you know, I, I always have to acquiesce to my big time rule followers. This technically should be in your liquids bag. Okay, next off in here, I'm going to have a hair tie. You might wanna have a scrunchie. You might wanna have a barrette. If you have long hair like me, being able to tie it back is, is really great. It just kind of gets in my face and I want it out of my face. So I will always have a hair tie. I will have my regular lipstick. Um, this one is Nature's Blush by L'Oreal. It's not what I'm wearing today, but uh, just because I do like to put on a little bit of color before we land. And then I will also have just a lip balm again. And in fact, I have a couple of viewers that are flight attendants and the two things that they tell me they always have in their pocket on every single flight is lip balm and moisturizer of some kind. Because again, did we talk about this? The dry air, the death eater, it just, it just sucks every bit of moisture out of your body. I can't even tell you guys. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you, lip balm and moisturizer. You wanna make sure you have those in your bag. So those are in there as well. And really you guys, that's it. Now for you, your you know list of what needs to be in there might be bigger than mine. I will tell you that it was a bit of trial and error over the years as I've had you know different different size bags and different things that I've taken. You might watch an older video of mine and I might have had completely different things in here. Um, and especially in terms of like you know self care and medication and things like that, um, you might want to have a sleep mask in here. Um, you may want to have and, and I just don't like sleep masks. They just kind of make me crazy. But if you're a person who likes that, you might want to have that in here. And just all of the things to make you feel more human without having to dig into that personal item under the seat. You've got it, you're wearing it on your body so you're not worried about things falling out of the floor, falling into your seat, everything is zipped up and safe. And if you've ever lost anything on a long haul flight on the floor, you know what I'm talking about, it's a whole ordeal. <laughs> so it's really about having it all contained, wearing it on your person, and making that long haul flight in coach feel as first class as you're capable of making it feel. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, I will link everything that I can down in the description box below. I will be doing more long haul flight videos coming up, especially again, since I just got done with one. I have another one scheduled very soon. So I will share with you guys as I learn different things that work, but this cabin bag has been a godsend and really does help my flights feel more human. So I hope whatever you're doing today, you're finding joy. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I do not do sponsored videos. So as always, this video is being brought to you by my patrons. You can join us at patreon.com slash Jen LaForge. We have private videos, private live streams, blog posts, a private Instagram, all kinds of fun things. And I would love to see you over there. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.